one. Great trick. Muscle and blood. No matter where you fish or which species you fish for, certain angling themes apply both close to home and around the globe. One such characteristic is the need for speed. Be it slow, fast, or somewhere in between, presenting lures or baits at the right pace draws the interest and ire of predator fish. And once the target is recognized and acquired, the chase is on, and the end result is inevitable. Fish are cold-blooded creatures whose body temperatures match those of the surrounding water, directly affecting their levels of activity. Sometimes fish prefer slow-moving tactics, particularly when the water is cold. At other times, you need to pick up the base to initiate the chase, making fish believe a fast-moving target is panicked, vulnerable, and fleeing for its very life. That's particularly true during the warm weather and water of summer, when cold-blooded fish become savage, hot-blooded hunters on the prowl. Water is water, and fish may be fish, no matter if they live in salt water or fresh. But one thing's for sure, Similar species often react much the same to key aspects of their local environments, even though they live many miles apart. This week on Bridging Waters, we head to freshwater in the Minnesota Northwoods in search of summer musky action, using fast-paced bucktail tactics to cover water quickly and trigger savage strikes. Speed trolling over those rocks, man, with the bucktail. Wow, wow, big fish, big, big musky. Then, we shift our efforts to warmer climes for some frantic saltwater excitement, where trolling lures at breakneck speeds whips ferocious wahoo into a feeding frenzy. So hang on tight, because the strike is bound to be furious and the bite to be big, mean, and awesome. Now, let's hook up with our freshwater fishing experts as they target monster muskies. Late summer is certainly one of the prime times to target muskies. It's fun, the water's warm, the fish are generally shallow and they're active. They bite lures that move fast. And we've been watching the weather really closely and we've got a big system that's coming through it. It uh, looks like the weather's gonna drop tomorrow by about 20 degrees. We're gonna get into the low 40s tonight where it's been in the 80s and we've had you know, lows in the mid 60s. So this is the first big cold front that's on its way through here shortly. So Jim and I thought, well, <laughs> I think that's a pretty good time to go chase muskies. You know, on any given lake, one really key is obviously is bait fish. Uh, Jeremy and I uh, yesterday actually fished uh, a number of our classical uh, deep water big points or main lake structures in this lake and we saw very, very few fish, and there actually wasn't very much bait fish in those particular areas. Uh, since that point in time, we actually we started doing a lot more trolling, covering a lot more water. We got into a lake section where we're seeing bait fish, we're seeing, you know, as you're trolling around the edges of these structures in here, we're actually seeing some walleyes. So there's fish in this area. The one thing that's really key, and you understand in many bodies of water, the fish are moving. You can actually have vast structures that look really good, but there's no fish there. And the reason being, there's no food. Food is the key in a lot of cases. There's a couple of distinct patterns that you have to be concerned with anytime you go musky fishing. Number one is the locational pattern the fish can be using seasonally, and number two is the presentation or lure options the fish are willing to bite. Let's first look at locational strategies. The day before this trip, a friend called us and told us there was a hot bite happening on shoreline rocks. That's where we started this mission. After six hours of casting and no bites or follows, we opted to explore some different water. From here, we experimented on shallow weed flats and sunken humps. Though we did see some fish, still no bites. We came to the conclusion we're doing something wrong and it could be presentation. Here comes the second part of the equation. What are the fish willing to bite? In midsummer, burning bucktails is a tried and true tactic. We got her. Got her. Nice. Slow moving topwater is another option. Small gliders and crankbaits have their time in place. When all else fails, high speed trolling is a great technique to first find fish and secondly, trigger strikes. You know, one thing that actually out in uh, Lake Sinclair, which I'm going to fish a bass tournament, 
later in the week, they do this all the time. They do high speed trolling, short line trolling and catch muskies. And it works in other areas as well. Let me I'm get very the net. nervous right now. I haven't seen her yet. I you just saw that big mouth. I just saw a big mouth behind the bait. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. Nice, nice one. one. Man, on. is that Whoa. a beauty? That's a beauty, Jim. Here she comes, Jim. You ready? Well, easy, easy, easy. Oh. Come. There, there, another you go. little. I was gonna get her into the board. net before. <laughs> I, I hate that out on the end of the net. Yeah. I mean, All right, here we go. We get a quick peek before I get her back. Wow, is that fish beautiful? What a gorgeous, gorgeous musky. I'm gonna get her back quick. Okay. Oh, there you go, beautiful. Interestingly enough, over the last, well, let's say it's 18, 19 oh hours God. we've been fishing, we've caught two yeah, in the last half an hour, which is classic when it comes to musky fishing. But we have put a ton of miles on these bucktails and never had a follow or a strike casting a bucktail. The only thing, thing we saw fish on casting were very erratic jerk baits and soft plastics. But we put these bucktails on and start high speed trolling them and we start catching fish. The thing is, for about five casts anyway, you can make the bait go as fast as we're fishing it right now. That's all I've got in me. And it's just cranking as hard as you can with a big cranking handle like this. But here you're just endlessly burning a bucktail and speed in the summer can be a huge, huge factor. It's unbelievable how the fish really like speed. And it would take us, the area we just trolled over and caught those two fish, it would have taken us a solid four hours to cover that ground if we were casting. Up and angling is all about efficiency. When we come back, more high speed oh, summer musky wow. action. Big fish, man. Speed trolling over those rocks, man, with the bucktail. Wow, wow, big fish, big, big muskie. Structures. Oh, wow, big fish, man. Speed trolling over those rocks, man, with the bucktail. Wow, wow, big fish, big, big muskie. I'll big really muskie. Put it in neutral. I'll get, I'll get here. Yeah, big muskie. Wow, yeah. she rolled on it the first time, Jim, and just came back and lunched it. The fish have just been so tough to pattern in any particular location. So the name of the game right now is covering water. And I think, I didn't get a good look at this fish, but I think it's a real giant. I mean, I'm talking a giant fish. It is a really, really big muskie. I saw the tail of the fish. Wow, is that fun. Oh. Oh yeah, look at that horse, Jim. I haven't seen her yet. Ooh, she's staying down. Tough customer. Oh yeah, big Oh yeah, look at that leopard. Whoa. Beautiful fish. Yeah, beautiful, yeah. Well, beautiful I don't know how fish. well she hooked she is. Yep, you got the net there. Now well. Now well, we're going to real quick here. That's a big one now. Come here, buddy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wow, that's a big one. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty leopard there. Try to keep her head down. Yeah, I'm with you. You got to. There we go, oh, Jim. Boy, there's a good one. Huh? <laughs> Look at that. Wow. Experimentation, and that's that's what we're doing is we're talking about choices and lures and different styles of presentation to be the most efficient. Today it happens to be with muskies, but really for any fish, and I'm gonna show you this one here, and that was efficiency, speed trolling. Let me get this guy cleaned up. Wow, get Jim. This lure out of there. What did he bite on? I bit on what? one of those new bucktails, the new blue fox super boo. Super boo. New bait. Every year we get new bait. New favorite Ooh. lures. This is the Blue Fox Super Boo. Woohoo, this is a big Number fish, eight. Jim. Wow, is this yeah, a that's big That's a big fish. boy there. You got her? Yep, I just about got my hands. There we go. Whew. Wait till you get a peek at this animal. Holy cow, you got the net jump? Yep. Oh, whoa. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the size of that fish. It is absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous, it is. And the wow. whole deal with angling is all about experimentation throughout the course of any given day and throughout the course of a season, things are constantly changing and being able to adapt 
to the current weather conditions and the locations fish are in. We'll make you successful and hopefully put one it of these beauties today. in the boat. It sure did. Look at that, that, there, look at that fish. I'm going to get her back. Yep. Woo. Coming up next, a subtropical sojourn to the Bahamas for wild wahoo action. You know, monster muskies aren't the only predatory fish that like running down big baits in warm water. Right now, let's join our saltwater fishing pros off Chub Key in the Bahamas as they run down one of the fastest fish in the ocean, the mighty wahoo. You see that line, PLO? Can you imagine having 80 pound suffix line just peeling off the reel like that? That's a scary deal right there. Hand line in the wahoo. We keep the boat in gear, because here's what happens. Using these big giant hooks, heavy lures, all this terminal tackle. But what ends up happening, guys, is that it tears a monster hole in the fish's mouth because of the speed that you're trolling. So even though it's a pain in the butt and it's hard on the angler, Keeping the boat in gear is how we keep the hook in them. And I'm gonna say it's not easy. There's the 300 foot mark. As you can tell here, Ian's got three different pieces of, of floss on there. That indicates 300 feet. A guy from, I guess Miami or Fort Lauderdale, South Florida, a guy named Ronnie Chapman. The guy who kind of developed this technique. He was winning all the Wahoo tournaments. Everybody said, what in the dang heck is he doing? He was running around, trolling around at 15 knots, and everybody thought he was nuts. But you know what? He was nuts. He was nuts for Wahoo. Now remember, guys, you don't have to be an expert. This is about covering ground. That's one of the reasons why we like trolling 15 knots. Okay? And also remember that Wahoo likes structure. Whether you're in the Gulf of Mexico fishing the wrecks or the wrecks off of the East Coast, the key is that they really like structure. What we're doing here is we're trolling in and out off a ledge that they like to live in or live off of. Somewhere between 300 and 600 feet. And Ian, as he goes along, we've got the rods set at different distances behind the boat. Man, he's starting to really pull there. Wow, I need to back off a little. You know, Ian, what's amazing is how this stuff, these wahoos really test your tackle. You know, if you don't have one, a full spool, you could get stripped. Well, one of the things that you're you're working with here is, you know, when you're trolling, you're doing anywhere from 12 to 18 knots. So you already have your line loaded up. Um, when those wahoo hits, you know, and they and they drag drag out that line. Sometimes they take out half your spool. So if your knots aren't right and you don't have heavy terminal tackle, you're in trouble. Another thing you need is you need a, a fairly strong drag that can withstand the trolling speed. Because just at trolling, you know, you need about 20 pounds, 20 pounds of drag. Right. Just to troll. Keep it from slipping. But otherwise, it's going to slip. Ooh. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Grip. I'm going to bring it right up to you, OK? There you go. Nice fish. You all right there? Get him in the okay, boat. Your nice. leader's caught around the, the ladder. OK, yeah, go ahead. Um, you need help? You want me to get him? Well, I think I just filled the answer on the pole here. You're good. Wow, look at Whoa. that, baby! That's what I'm talking about! Look at that, wahoo! Woo! Woo look at that one! <laughs> there we go, buddy. Nice. Ian! Beautiful fish. Big fish, Ian! Nice. Nice job there, Rick. Big fish, Ian! Way to go, Murph! Holy moly! 
Let me get a, let me get a picture of that one. He's bigger than me. He's bigger than me. There you go, Rick. Look here. Hey, nice that's a Murphy-sized Wahoo, Daddy. I know that's not a 150 pounder, but, but he's, he's big enough for me. That's right. Dang. Beautiful fish. When we return, more high-speed pursuit on the high seas. Buddy, I've uh, I've Put some learned. pressure on that fish. Let's go. Oh, you want to You want me to pressure him? All come right. on, let's go. Yeah, man. Put, if put you can get him, let's go. I can get him. If he'll turn around and come right at you, and then we'll right. lose. Let me do that. Go, go, baby. I can go. You want to go down the high gear? Oh, there you go. Huh? Are you good at low? I'm good right here. Huh? I'm good right here. Hey, yeah. Let me ask you something. Certainly, there's a lot of different types of reels that you can use to do this. These are what, 80 pound reels? These are actually 50 wide. 50 wide. Tiagra 50 wide. And they have a pretty heavy drag. Um, any 50 or 80 pound reel, good quality wheel, should be able to uh, you know, give you enough drag. And what you're looking for is you need at least 20 pounds of drag for doing this high speed trolling. And you don't want your, you know, your line to slip while you're trolling. So at strike, that's the minimum you need. You're already at 20. Yeah, you got to be at 20. That's unbelievable to have 20 pounds of drag. Now you got 80 pound or 50 pound line. What pound line is this? I'm using 80 pound line. Easy fish. 300 shock, 300 pound shock cord, and then you know cable on the. He's just resisting cable on all the way back. Right. Can't believe it. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. And get ready to back up. I'm gonna go okay. to the black knob there, fish. Slow down. Anywhere. We, we gotta get a photo of that. Nice. Hey, right. rappelers, 
Something. Something, man. Eat it out of there, because it's all you need, baby. There you it's go. all you need. Whether it's muskies on the prowl up north or wahoo on the warpath in more southerly latitudes, the common characteristic is that big, powerful fish with sharp teeth and powerful jaws don't nibble or quibble when it comes to biting. Show them something vulnerable, moving at a fast and furious pace, and caution goes out the window. Enhanced speed instinctively triggers predators into striking, and when the bite is on, the fight lies close behind. That wraps things up for this edition of Bridging Waters. We'll see you next time when the angling action and the excitement kicks back into high gear out there just past the horizon.